Hey, what's up, users? This is John at muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And today is a big day. Uh, there is a new update to Adobe Muse. Um, it is now Adobe Muse 2015.2. Um, so there are 15 updates that I'm going to go over in this video tutorial. Um, there are more updates than that, but these are the 15 that I think are most important. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up Adobe Muse. And we can see right away that this image is different. And the first update we see is the view for the recent websites. Uh, so now the recent websites look like this and you can open them, open them from here. And if these websites had images, we'd see the images here of the website. Um, and here's the website name and we can view the websites in a list view or in a grid view. Um, and here's the size, uh, the kind and the website name and when it was last opened. Um, so that's the first update there. And then I'll go to file new site. And I'll click OK. And here we have the home page. So to demonstrate this update, I'm going to create a few pages here. So let's say we have a really large website with a lot of pages. We'll just create some pages here. And before, if you had a really large website, to see all of the pages on the website, you'd have to scroll left and right to see all the pages. But now with this update here, the vertical sitemap display, if I click here, I can view all the websites vertically and I can see all the pages here. So I have the master page, the main pages, and the child pages here. And I could add pages here as well. Okay, so that's the second update. Now I'll click on the home page. Uh, the third update I'll go over is the ellipse tool. Uh, before in Adobe Muse, if you wanted to create a circle, you create a rectangle and I'll fill it here. And then you'd go to the cor corner radius tool and you just make this number really high here. Okay, and there we have a circle. Um, and it is somewhat of a circle. The only thing with this is that when you made the rectangle larger, only the sides are cornered there, but the top is flat and doesn't really look like an oval, uh, more so like just the two sides are uh, cornered here. Um, so now with the ellipse tool in Adobe Muse, um, if I delete this here and I go to the rectangle, I'll click hold and drag and select the ellipse tool and I'll draw an ellipse. So now it's more of an oval here and I'll click fill and I can create an ellipse in Adobe Muse and I could create a perfect circle by making it a square as well, just like that. Okay, so that's the third update. The fourth update I'll go over um, is the vertical move handle. So I'll just create some elements here and I'll copy these elements just like that. And if I select this first, first element here, and uh, we notice here to the left, we have this handle, which is the vertical move handle, and it'll move elements uh, below, any elements that are below this element here, it'll move it down the page. Uh, so this is great for design, if you wanted to make more space on your website, or if you had a really long website, you could use the move handle to move elements down the page, just like that. And it works with guides as well. So if I bring in a guide, just like that, and I select the guide, um, I can use the move handle to bring elements down just like that. So if you wanted to make more space in between certain elements, you could use the move handle here. Okay, so that's the fourth update. And I'll just uh, remove these elements here. Uh, the fifth update I'll go over is the rectangle frame tool. So we have this frame tool right below the rectangle tool. And if I select it, I can create a frame, a rectangle frame. Um, now this is great when designing a website because if you've ever worked with wireframes, um, it, it kind of allows you to build your website before placing any images. So they work as placeholders uh, for images. So here I have two frames and there's two ways of adding images to the frame. So once you've added the frames and you're ready to add the images, um, I'll just go into my finder here. Uh, one way of adding an image is if you click, hold and drag and place the image into Adobe Muse. Um, we can see that this, that this image is fairly large. Um, so what I'll do is I'll right click and I'll select cut and then I'll select the frame and then in the frame I'll right click and say paste as background image. Um, so now it's kind of the similar or the same to filling a rectangle with an image. We can now go to fill. Uh, in the fitting we can say scale to fill and reposition the image within the frame just like that. And if you notice, we have kind of these X's within the frame. Um, if you don't see, the, see those X's, you can go to view. And if you don't see the X's or the frame edges, 
um, you can say show frame edges here it says hide frame edges uh, because I have them visible okay and the other way of adding an image to the frame um, is I'll click hold and drag the image into Adobe Muse and I'll just place the image within the frame so I'll do that again I'll click hold and drag place the image and then I'll place the image within the frame and now the image is placed uh, within the frame um, it's similar to click holding and dragging the image into Adobe Muse uh, but now with the frame the image fits within the frame um, and you can select the image double click and move the image within the frame and because it's been placed within the frame you can right click edit image properties and change the, the tooltip and add alternative text uh, with this one here because it's been placed as a background image uh, we don't have those options but we do have the fill options here um, and with this one we can double click and move within the frame just like that okay so those are the two ways of adding images to a frame and you could also do it with an ellipse frame so I'll select the ellipse frame tool and I'll create an, an ellipse and I'll just drag an image into the ellipse here okay so there we have an image within the ellipse All right, and I could also paste in here right click cut and then right click paste as background image and then fill scale to fill and center Okay, so that is the fifth update there, the rectangle frame tool and the ellipse frame tool. Um, it can work really great when designing your website and it's kind of like wireframing a little bit and you can have placeholders for your images and once you're ready to add images, you can add the images. And the next update is responsive width and height. So I'll create a few rectangles here and I'll copy and paste. Just like that and I'll change the color here uh, there we go okay and before in Adobe Muse we had responsive width so I'll select both of these I'll go to resize and I'll say responsive width so now I'll go to file preview page and browser and if I resize the browser we can see that these rectangles are, are responsive in width just like that and let me remove them from the edges so we can see it a little bit better So we can see that these rectangles are responsive in width. Uh, but now with the new responsive width and height in the resize option, uh, we can change the height and the width of the rectangle of the rectangles as the browser changes. So I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And as I resize the browser, the height and the width of the rectangles change. So the next update is the responsive width and height for YouTube and Vimeo videos. So I'll go to object, insert widget, social, and I'll select YouTube and I'll place right in there and I'll center it. So now I'll go to file preview page and browser. And if I make the browser smaller, the video is now responsive in width and height. All right. So that's the seventh update. Now the eighth update is the minimum width here. Uh, before to change the minimum width of the website, you'd have to right click. Uh, and go to breakpoint properties and change the min width here. Uh, but now you can just drag this handle here and change the min width there. All right, and now to the ninth update, which is a really great update. Um, we all know that with the fluid width, a responsive version of Adobe Muse, the scroll effects were disabled. Um, you'd have to use adaptive design to use the scroll effects. Uh, but now you can use the scroll effects if one of the breakpoints is a fixed width. Um, so I'm going to add a few breakpoints. So I'll say 768, uh, 640, and 480. All right, so I have four breakpoints there. So now if I go to the scroll effects panel, we can see it says to enable scroll effects, your breakpoint must be fixed width. So to make a breakpoint fixed width, you could just right click and uncheck fluid width. So now I have access to the scroll effects within this breakpoint here. So now you have the option to use the scroll effects within one of the breakpoints if the breakpoint is a fixed width. And this works really well. Let's say you wanted the largest breakpoint to be a fixed width um, and to have scroll effects, you could set it to fixed width. And then for, let's say, the lower breakpoints for like tablet and mobile, um, you could have that fluid width. And because tablet and mobile don't work great with scroll effects anyway, um, this is a great way to be able to use scroll effects in Adobe Muse. So your largest breakpoint could have fixed width and you could access all the scroll effects and then have fluid width for any of the lower breakpoints. 
Okay, so the next update is with the CC libraries and the swatches panel. So I'll open up my CC libraries and here I have a few colors. Uh, now what you can do is you can add these colors from the CC libraries into your swatches panel. So if I select multiple colors here, just like so, I can right click. And before I'll show you the swatches panel, we see the colors aren't there. Uh, but now I'll select these colors and I'll right click and add to swatches. And now if I open the swatches panel, those colors have been added to the swatches panel. And you might be asking why add it to the swatches panel. Um, and the swatches panel is just great because if you you change the color of an element to, to one of the colors in the swatches, and I'll copy and paste here, um, and then you go into the swatches panel and I'll double click in here, and then you change the color for the swatch it'll change the color for those elements that have that swatch applied to, to them. Uh, so it's an easy way to change color, uh, to change the colors of elements on your Adobe Muse website. And the other thing you can do is if you have an element selected, uh, you could right click in your CC libraries and select set fill color and it'll fill this rectangle with the fill color. Or you could right click and set stroke color uh, to the element and add a stroke to the element from the CC libraries, uh, just like that. And if you had text, you can write some text and I'll select it and then you can right click on the color and set set the text color uh, because it is highlighted if you select any of the colors here it will change the color of the text the next update is that you can now drag and drop Adobe Illustrator files into Adobe Muse um, so I have an Illustrator file here so I'll click hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website okay and here's the image and looks great and it pastes the image as an SVG uh, so I'll just center it here and I'll go to file preview page and browser and now the image is pasted as an SVG within Adobe Muse and what's great about using an Illustrator file is that it does have a fallback so if the browser doesn't support SVG then the image will be used as a PNG and if I edit the Illustrator file in here I'll right click open with Adobe Illustrator and if I delete, let's say, an element in here, I'll just delete one of these elements or those elements in the background and I hit Command S to save and I go back into Adobe Muse and I go back into the assets and I'll right click and update asset. Now those images have been deleted as well. So I can go into Illustrator and change the images in Illustrator and then update it in here and it will be updated. And the next update I'll go over is this export uh, or collect all assets update. So let's say you were building a website and you were getting assets from different locations on your computer or for, from different sources. Um, by collecting all assets, you can consolidate all the assets into one folder and then you could have the assets in one folder and get the assets from that folder. Uh, so first, first you'd wanna save the website. So I'll click file, save site, and I'll save it in here. I'll just call it website and they're saved and then I can click here collect all assets and then select this folder select choose and then it says one of one asset was collected and if I go into the finder my assets will be in this folder so that's the 12th update I have there and the next updates are fairly quick um, you can now allow for fallback fonts so if I go to file site properties and I go to the advanced tab here. Uh, we now have this option here that says load pages faster using fallback fonts. So let's say you have this option selected. Uh, what will happen is that Adobe Muse will use a fallback font uh, initially so that the user can read the, the text really quick and then the font will load. And for design purposes, this option might not be great because the user will see kind of like a fallback font and then they'll see the regular font. But if you did want to enable it uh, for faster loading or if your font was heavy, um, you could check this here and use a fallback font. And the next update has to do with the preview mode. So if I go to Adobe Muse here and I go to preferences, uh, we now have this preview network address option. Uh, we have automatic, localhost, and this option here. And here we can see it says, choose which network address Muse should use for preview and preview in browser. For most users, the automatic setting is best. If preview is not working, try one of try one of the other choices. Um, so usually you can just leave it on, on automatic, but if you do have any conflicts or the preview mode isn't working, you can change it to one of these. 
Okay, and the last update, I'm actually going to read from the What's New page. So I'll go here into Creative Cloud. I'll go into Adobe Muse and I'll click on what, what's new here. And I'll click on see full release notes. And here you can see all the release notes for the updates. And right here we have this improved Google page speed ranking. And I'll read this here. Here it says Adobe Muse now loads all JavaScript asynchronously. Also, if your site is hosted on an Apache web server and you upload your site using FTP, browser caching for CSS, images, and JavaScript files is enabled. These changes can help improve Google page speed ranking. So I just wanted to read that there. So now Adobe Muse now loads all JavaScript asyn asynchronously, which will make the website faster. And it also caches CSS, images, and JavaScript files. Uh, so your website will load faster if the user is going to different pages on your website. It doesn't reload all that content. Okay, so those were the 15 updates that I wanted to go over in this video tutorial. Um, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.